Welcome back to another episode with Real Talk with Adore and Daisy. I'm Adore. I'm Daisy. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey. We got Sid in the building. What up, though? You already know how this goes. Sid done been here a few times with us. So we're going to check in on your mental health. Uh, My mental health is excellent. That's good. That's good. I don't let no bullshit interfere with nothing. 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 That shit will get cut. Yeah, I'm feeling um, to the to the point where you really just cannot stress over things you can't control because you go fucking lose your mind and there's nothing you can do about it. Like it's absolutely nothing you can do about it. So no, for sure, you definitely can only like that's like one thing I think I tell all my artists. It's like we only worry about the things that we can control. Mm-hmm. Everything else is like it is what it is. Just do the best at what we got control of. Mm-hmm. I feel it. My mental health is good. I'm still learning not to stress over certain things, but it's like my mind be having a text with myself, if that makes sense. Like, sometimes I know I can't stress over it, but sometimes it'll bother me real bad, to that, and then I really be ending up stressing. But I'm still trying to, like, talk myself out of stuff like that, so I'm still working on it. Got to let shit go. I had a hard time letting things go. Yes, she does. Why? Because <laughs> most of the time people do stuff to me, I would never do that to them. See, but that's the thing. See, I was just talking about this. You can't expect people to be you. That's true. That's the number one thing I think we all do. I used to do it a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't do that, but people not you. So you can't expect them to do what you would do. Mm -hmm. And you got to just be you. You can't, and you also can't let how other people do things change how you do things either. You got to just be you. I'm still me, but I still have a hard time letting it go. <laughs> I mean, if you don't fuck with it, then just let them go. Like, just don't fuck with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't half-ass it. But if you're going if you gonna deal with it, like, or whoever or whatever the situation is, if you're going to deal with it, just deal with it for what it is. That's another exactly. thing that's what people do. We deal with things for what we think it should be or could be or the potential of mm-hmm. instead of what it is. If you deal with what it is, then you're going to be all right. Yeah, you won't be disappointed by what you want it to be. Because you're dealing with what it is. (laughs) That's why we locked in with her. That's why we locked in with it. Yeah, so tell the people, like, who you are, because you are really, like, a behind-the-scenes type of person, so. Um, Said Louis, Hands Up Management. Uh, I started my company in 2006. Um, Even before that, I was doing street team stuff in, like, 2003 uh, for, like, Interscope, uh, J Records, Reebok, stuff like that. 2006, I got my first management client, uh, Sick Notes. Um, my boy is Pepper Wit. Um, they did like How Come for D12, did Crown Out for OB Trash. Did a lot of stuff for Shady Records. Um, did stuff for K John. I don't know if y'all mm-hmm. old enough to remember who K John. Yeah, K John. He had a he had a real big stepping record. He from Detroit. Shout out K John. So we did the uh, I Get Around the title track on his uh, album. Um, just everything just went from there. Who do you manage now? Um, Hell of a, um, Nisha Nache, Brielle Leslie. Um, I work, work on the management team for Rod 49, GMO Stacks, um, Wayne 616. Like, Wayne is like a producer that's like, uh, that me and Hell of a work on together. Like, mm-hmm. um, Hell of a have found Wayne through just working in the studio. He was like, yo, there's somebody I want to work with and collaborate with. So, you know, that's something that me and Hell of a Dude jointly is work with Wayne 616. Um, I do some A&R stuff, a little double O, the sign of future. Um, I got my uh, my man, uh, Million Melodies, Kevo Hendrix. He been down with me for forever um, on the management team for Bodie James. Okay. Yeah. So, you got like, a lot of people on. <laughs> like, I'm like, you got a lot of people under your belt right now, so... How did you get into managing? Well, when I first, so I wanted to do, so I played music when I was young. I, like, I was in a band in school and stuff like that. And then my grandfather was, like, into music heavy. Um, my biological father was, like, a DJ. Like, he wasn't, like, serious. Like, just, he was, like, neighborhood mm-hmm. like, DJ, DJ, neighborhood parties and stuff like that. But my, my, my grandfather and dad was, like, both, like, heavy, like, music people. Like, from a fan perspective. And my stepfather. My stepfather, like, that's who I would like. He would go buy vinyls, and I'd mm-hmm. sit downstairs in the basement with him and listen to records and all that stuff. Um, So I had a love for music early. 
I end up transitioning, like, playing sports. So I got into sports, but I still kind of had, like, this, like, itch for music. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got, when I went to college, on the, I went to, to Tiffin University on a football scholarship, I ended up getting hurt. I hurt my knee, tore my ACL. And then that, like, you know, I started uh, uh, Fruity Loops, where it's FL Studios now, but it was Fruity Loops just when it first came out. Start messing around with that in school. Was you know was doing that for a little bit, and then I kind of started looking into like, all right, if I am gonna try to do music, like let me see how it works. Right. So then I started doing my research on that part, and I kind of just went down that rabbit hole and kind of just fell in love with that part of it. It's so crazy because somebody came up to me and asked me to manage them, and I'm like, baby, I don't know how to manage my own life. You want me <laughs> to manage your career? <laughs> I mean, I think people, so I, I'll say this as a manager, right? Like, it's really like people just see if you hustle and you connect mm-hmm. it, right? So they that's, like, that's all I could think of. Yeah, I'm like, so, you know, they, you know, oh, you be my manager. And the, just the crazy part, though, right? So I learned, I taught myself music law. Like, I used to go, uh, shout out my homegirl, Car. She, was, she used to work security at the law library at Wayne State. Cause she went to school there, so I used to bring her lunch, and then she'd just let me come in the library. Okay. So I go in there and I was reading all these music law books. Um, shout out Karen Dumas. Karen Dumas, like, uh, she gave me one of her music uh books. All you need to know about this business of music. Mm-hmm. She like gave me her copy. I think I still got her copy somewhere. I don't think I ever gave it back to her, but she gave me that. I learned. So I like l- dug deep in and learned all this stuff about music law. To just find out niggas don't know nothing about music law for real. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, but it helped me though, right? Mm-hmm. It helped me in my journey because like as I really started getting into it, I got cool with all the lawyers because I was saying shit and they'd be like, how you know that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Or like just my conversation with them was different of what I would ask about or the, you know the questions I would ask them or say I want this or that. And they like, how you know that? And then they got cool. Then they start teaching me more stuff and it's just right snowball effect. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. I um respect your hustle, your grind, like your leadership skills, the fact that your communication is A1. Like, I really appreciate, you know, all the stuff that you've done for us this far, like for your clients. Like, that's like top tier because it's not out here. People don't be professional. People mm-hmm. aren't about their business. Like, they don't care. Like, people just feel like starting a business and having a business is cool. Like, oh, mm-hmm. just stay there, entrepreneur. And it's not. It's so much more that come with it. So, like, ever since we reached out to you, you always responded, whether it's the answer we wanted or not. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. that's, I really feel like anybody you manage going to make it just off of your skills alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so much more to building a team and a manager like Mm -hmm. you is needed. So, when it's time for us to get a manager, (laughs) yeah, that out there. I appreciate that. (laughs) You know, that's something that me personally that I would look into. So, like, if y'all looking for a manager and if you're taking on clients, I highly (laughs) recommend him. Like, communication skills, A1, top tier. Like, I'm not even lying. Don't say that too loud. All my clients, they they be jumping down my neck. Like, nope, nobody else. (laughs) Oh, no, they're very Oh, you mean not bring nobody else on? Yeah. Uh, They're very territorial. Oh, uh, I bet, be, right. Because I would be like, yeah. no, what? That's my manager. <laughs> yeah, they're very, yeah, they're very territorial. Yeah. What, but a lot of the clients that I work with, right, they, like, really my, like, I have, like, friendships with them for real. Mm-hmm. So they're, like, really my people. Like, like Brielle, like, I've known Brielle since she was, like, 17 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally, like, watch her grow up. Um, Me and Nisha have been locked in about six, seven years now. Kevo, I've been working with Kevo. She damn near ten years now. Okay. Bodhi, me and Bodhi know each other from when we was kids, but like as far as professionally, like we like eleven, twelve years in. You know what I'm saying? So these like my people for real. Mm-hmm. Right, you've so. been working. Yeah, definitely. You be everywhere. You be here, there, whatever. But you still make it happen. Yeah. Somebody told me yesterday. I was at the studio yesterday, and somebody told me they was like, said like they be like, when I hit you up. You always respond back. Like they was like, "How do you respond back?" Like I know you be doing so much stuff, and I sit and watch you do all this stuff. How do you? I don't know. It's just like second you nature. Just do it. How do you balance? Because some artists or just people, whatever they do, like whether it's comedian or whatever they reached out to, and I'm not gonna say they are Detroit artists because they wasn't. They all have like a number. We actually dealt with somebody. Remember um, when they was from Chicago? And remember mm-hmm. we was talking to him, and he was like, I'm his manager, but such and such got his phone. It was just so much of the back and forth. 
But we actually reached out to the actual artist. That's how we linked. But I was talking to, well, he was talking to us. So, you know yeah. me, I'm going to get on business because what yeah. else are we going to talk about? And I'm like, so we text that number. Nobody responded. And he was like, what number y'all text? And he was like, oh, such and such got that phone. He off right now. Like, it was just so much. But, like, being a manager is so much more than just responding to calls. Like, tell us the inside scoop on it. Man. <laughs> so you got to know schedules. You got to. Yeah, I mean, it's that. It's like, it's life, too. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like you're dealing with a person's life. Because the. Cause the funny thing about music is the the it's a person, but they a product too. So it's like, mm-hmm. so it's like it's not like you selling like a, a coat or something like that. These a person they got feelings. Like some days they might not feel like that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or some days it's real stuff going on in their life, and you got to deal with that. Um, so it's like psychiatrist, best friend, uh, assistant. Like every it's all things like all this stuff bought up in one. It's a lot. I can see me breaking down one day. I mean, I break down all the time, but like, <laughs> I already know, like, the way the route we going, like, it's we really be booked. Like, a lot of people reach out to us, and they get overwhelming because we is the manager, we is mm-hmm. the responders, we are. It's a lot. We do our own, like, by joining the network. You know, Barry. Shout out to Barry and the Uprising Network. You know, he do the behind the scenes, but far as like marketing and stuff, like we still gotta uphold our end. You know, no, for sure. it's a lot. It's we a lot to market. Balance. We gotta find the guests. We gotta get to the guests. Get somebody to respond sometime. Like. I mean, but that's see now and y'all thing. It's not more so a manager. Y'all really need a producer, like somebody to produce the show. You know what I'm saying? Because I worked in, like I said, I worked in radio for six years, so. That's another thing I did, being a producer of the show. So it's like, I'm in charge of getting the guests, you know, the the talent and be like, all right, my, I want to interview such and such or such and such and reached out to us to get interviewed. So me, my responsibility as the producer of the show is to organize the show mm-hmm. and then the talent show up, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But the talent's involved. Like, what y'all doing is not wrong because everything going to stop and start with y'all. Right. That's anything, any artist or whatever – like, nobody should be working harder than you for you. Mm-hmm. Like, so you're going to go out there and create the relationships because at the end of the day, people want to talk to you. They want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. They don't want to talk to me necessarily. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're a good person to talk to, though. No, I mean, I, I, I am, but you know what I'm saying? But they want to they wanna build like like an artist. They build relationships with the other artists. Like, like me and Hell of a Talk about this, like, I feel like me and him found our stride in our working relationship when it's like people want to talk to hell of it, right? So when he's responding to the artist, he kicking it with the artist, like we get more done that way because it's him and the artist and they built their rapport versus me hitting up an A&R or hitting somebody at the label, submitting beats, then they going to listen to the beats, listen to what they like, then it gets to the artist. But if hell of it and the artist... Uh, have a direct relationship. He can get the artist. He can build a relationship with the artist. The artist knows what they want. They can hit him. Hey, I need this type of beat or you know this the vibe I'm on, and we get more shit done that way. Mm-hmm. I feel it. And then once that's done, then it's like the thing is there. Then that's when I step in. Like, all right, let's make what y'all did make sense, and you know, and then go from there. So, how was your experience like at the radio? Like. Uh, was that like your first time when you first started? Was that your first time ever doing something like that? So the radio. So let me tell you how I start working. Even the reason I went to radio. So when I was in in Ohio at Tiffin, I dropped out. So um, I had got suspended from the football team. I, my my coach, I was hurt. So my coach wanted me to go out to practice every day. I'm like, fuck that. I'm trying to rehab my knee. And he felt like I was being – Told me I was being insubordinate because I wouldn't. I was doing my own thing, so he suspended me for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even know if I was gonna have a scholarship no more. Mm-hmm. So by then it was like, all right, this is what I want to do. So I just made up my mind and I just ended up leaving school and coming back home. So when I came back home, I was like, all right, I don't know nobody in the music. So I was like, I had a bright idea. Let me try to work at the radio station because I could meet people. Mm-hmm. So then I went, tried to get an internship. I actually went down to JLB. Uh, shout out to my man, DJ DDT, because he, like, that's how I ended up meeting him. I just went down there, met him. Um, they said, well, you got to be in school to get an internship. 
So then I ended up going to enroll at Specs Howard just so I could get an internship. And then I did get an internship. Like, I had actually three internships. I interned for Gerald McBride for voiceover productions. Okay. He does, like, all, a lot of the commercials and all that stuff you hear. Then I end up getting an internship at JLB. Um, and then I intern, and then that's when I started doing the street, turn, uh, street team internship because I worked at Best Buy um, in Madison Heights. And the dude who was over the street team, he used to come in there and shop every day. So me and him got cool there. Mm -hmm. Then he started seeing me at the radio station. So then I started interning for him too. You had a long list of stuff. Listen. So you got some experience built up <coughs> under your belt. So I feel like that was just all a part of your journey. Yeah. But yeah, but once, but back to the, the radio thing, I only went into radio so I could meet people. And it, it worked. <laughs> so how, how important is networking to you? It's super important. It's everything. It's my lifeline. That's why I'm here. <laughs> no, for real. That's why I'm here. Like, I built actual, genuine relationships with people. Because a lot of people that I meet, it's not even about if I'm going to do business with them. Like, if they cool, we just, and we got mutual interests, we just kick it, we yeah. cool. And then over time, you look, all the people that was the interns and all that, now they running the company. And you know what I'm saying? They're the heads of these companies. And these is like genuinely my friends. Mm -hmm. Like my man Wayno uh, at QC. Mm -hmm. Like me and Wayno met because we I was managing Bodie. He was managing Davies. We uh, both signed the Mass Appeal at around the same time. Me and him found out because Wayno used to intern for uh, Rockefeller. Lenny S is my one of my mentors. Lenny S who introduced me to the game. We'll get to that. But Lenny S who introduced me to the game. So when we found out we had that mutual interest, me and Wayno just got cool. We stay cool, and you know what I'm saying. Now, the things have shifted, and you know where we at right now. So, how do you get your artists? Like, what are you looking for in an artist when you actually start to manage them? Now, <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have this. No, thing, before but. it was like loving the music, right? Oh, like okay. you see the talent, like oh, this artist is so talented. I want to work with him. That ain't enough. Now it's mm -hmm. like. Who won it? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, who won it? Like, that's who sparked my interest. And and like also, like I said, I, I I build. It's like people. I don't just take on random people. It's like I've known you in some form or fashion. So I kind of I know you as a person. Mm -hmm. I have some type of personal connection to you. Um, but yeah, the work ethic. If you if you're not if you're not willing to put in the work, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Yeah, we had that conversation with somebody. <laughs> yeah, he said. <laughs> He was definitely looking for somebody to put in the work. Yeah. Like, you cannot be out working the person who's supposed to be working. No, you can't. <laughs> like, if, if I, and I'm on that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll get it to it. Like, you got to be on it. If you're not on it, somebody else on it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be working with whoever who I'm on, on it. it, right? Yeah, so, yeah. not personal. Right. It's, it's, it's business. business. <laughs> I feel like, um, if you not going to stand on business, how you want somebody else to stand on business about your craft or whatever it is? So, like, that's why I be real pers persistent, like, with things. Like, and people probably be like, she's just so serious. Like, but I have to be. Like, you are serious. <laughs> she's so serious. <laughs> like, you know people think you're so serious. You are, babe. I mean, I don't know how else to be. You cool. She got like this wall up though, like so. This see, this is me because I've been talking to her. Like we've been like cool. We've been building a personal relationship. <laughs> um, she got this wall up, so I don't know what that's about. We're gonna get to we're gonna get to that. Are we? I've been, this wall. Been Do you up think for I got a years. wall up? Uh, not now. But I've been working until October. Not now. Hmm. What you do? She still got this wall up. What have you been looking at, Barry? Uh, Do you? I, 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 like honest about it, but I've been. I got walls. I mean, she'll talk. Yeah, she'll talk, she's, but she still. It, it's I can't. I can't put my finger on it. But it's, like, <laughs> it's like this guarded thing you got going on. It's cool though. If it works for you, it's cool. <laughs> I guess I didn't notice. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. So what you you start? You did radio. You now you manage artists. Are is it any? Anything else you're looking to manage? Um, I actually just had a meeting um, with 
this guy, he, he wrote the script. For a movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just had a meeting with him. Um, so I think that's a project that I'm going to take on. Okay. I'm, like, helping him shop it around and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just, I had that probably, like, two, three days ago. That's dope. My birthday was on Monday. Happy belated birthday. birthday. Thank you. Sagittarius. Yes, of course. Okay. Oh, y'all are toxic. Why are you, of course, then? Are yeah. we toxic? Very y'all toxic. are very toxic. Toxic with a capital yeah. okay. T. Why? Talk about war. <laughs> Do I don't think I got a war. No, you said me a war. But yeah. You see, it, That's the reason you why. Sagittarius. <laughs> That's what's here. Yeah. What do we do? Y'all are fun. Y'all are very fun people. But, but the other side, on the like, if, other side of things, <laughs> on the other side of things, like on the dating side, y'all are toxic. Why? I don't know why. Saying, why give me, are you? Give me a to- so she's give, saying that they toxic. toxic. I'm saying they toxic. That means y'all. I'm toxic. saying, give me a toxic trait. Y'all feel like a Sagittarius guy. Um, they um they will see things their way. They'll want to be. What other way is it to see it? That Listen, like, They're like, same. boom. They see things their way, meaning as they may treat you as if you're more than what they will give you the title as. Bingo. If that oh, makes wow. sense, like, I feel you. I'm, I'm with you every day. I love you. Mm-hmm. I, you know, want to know everything you're doing, but don't worry about what I'm doing. Don't ask me no questions. No. Don't even ask see, me no, no questions. See, listen, I'm no, I'm not that. You probably had it. I'm not that. In your younger days. In your younger Sagittarius No, days. I'm not that. But, I, I mean, all the other stuff, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? I could kick it with somebody all the time, and it just. And that's that. Yeah. She's just my friend. That's my friend. Yeah. See, that's kind of the problem. But listen, it's the thing, right? Relationships. So, y- y'all taking this. We, we going on. This is a whole nother look. Relationship, <laughs> relationships should be built on friendship to begin with. Okay. The problem is. That we see somebody, oh, I like this person, I want to kick it with him. And you don't even really know that person for real. So then you get into it, you spend all this time, and then you, a year, two years in, and then you be like, I don't even like this motherfucker for real. You know what a Sagittarius told me before? A Sagittarius told me, like, it take five years to get to know somebody. He had it all written down. Excuse no, me? It, it, no, it He do. said the first year, everything going to be cool. He said the first year, I don't remember exactly, but the five first year, years. Yeah, listen to, really to me. Know somebody inside and out. Yes. Listen this to me. is extreme. Oh, listen not to extreme. me. This okay. is some Sagittarius I'm, I'm stuff. Okay. Let's, the let's first year it. is going to be all fun and games. That's the beginning. Of course, nobody show their true colors in the beginning. The second year, something may or may not happen, but it's still all in fun and games. The third, by the third year, somebody didn't show their true colors, and y'all might not even like each other. Fourth year, maybe y'all didn't accept the true colors, and but the fifth year, I mean, what the fuck happened on the fifth year? We didn't made it five years. Of, what? It is what it is. Oh hell, baby, I don't even want you. To, I don't even want to know you. I don't <laughs> even want you to get to know me at this point, cause what? Five but you know, Sagittarius, they are like. Cool people, they mm-hmm. reel you in. They mm-hmm. like lucky reel people. Like it's just mm-hmm. hard Sick. to explain. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> this might be my personal experience, but anybody, I'm that person that. What is your sign? <laughs> Sagittarius, gotta go. Red flag. <laughs> red terrible. flag. That's, that's a huge. That's a major red flag for me. We're yeah. some of the greatest human beings. No, y'all are like cool. y'all are great people, are amazing great people. people, givers. Like I don't really have anything bad to say about your character or your person, people. but when it comes to like relationships, oh baby, I don't think y'all are relationship people. I think y'all are y'all are very great people. Like and y'all are very good friends, and y'all give good advice. Y'all are giving, y'all loving, y'all mm-hmm. care. We have a lot to give. Exactly, yeah. and y'all want to give it to everybody. Not everybody. Mm. Okay. I don't know. Now, one Sagittarius that ain't gave to everybody that didn't came contact Okay. With. It might not be as big, but you didn't gave them something. Every. And if you exchanging body fluids, that's something. So. But. Okay. We'll Come talk. on. We'll let's talk. talk. No, this is the real talk. This is the so real talk. Tell here. us that. First of all, you're not even going to have sex with everybody you encounter. Like, if some you, people not, some people not in your life for sex, right? That's true. Like now, nah, this is this is the mature version of me, right? <laughs> not not everybody is for sex, you know what I'm saying? Some things are for like this is what you're for, you know what I'm saying? This is your purpose in my life, you know what I'm saying? So you just gotta identify this is what this person is in your life for, and then that be that. It ain't about you know what I'm saying? Everything ain't about sex or I'm fucking every girl I come across. 
it ain't even about that. Though, so. I think that's the mature side of things. But we talking about guys in their twenties, thirty, mm-hmm. probably pushing forty. Mm-hmm. Like I'm forty, I just turned forty. I said pushing forty, which means you at forty now, so you probably mature all the way. Yeah, you probably, or you just don't want to say certain things on camera, and that's okay too. But no, I say anything on camera. Because Todd Cherry's gonna be like, "That wasn't me." You can be quick to see, say, "That wasn't me." <laughs> wasn't me what? Sitting here on this chair, in this chair, <laughs> talking on the camera. I swear. <laughs> Y'all play a lot of games. Yeah, I play a lot Y'all of games. Crazy, <laughs> is that what y'all really think of Sagittarius? Yes, this is the real tea. Is- I just, I just had, I just had a, a, a discrepancy. <laughs> and then, y'all saying a lot of the stuff that was part of the argument. That's so. crazy. Gotta I be get, some truth. You are to mature it. if you call the argument a discrepancy. It was a discrepancy. <laughs> <laughs> You're very much mature. <laughs> it was. It was. You know what I'm saying? Like. She felt how she felt. I felt how I felt. It was like. Did you hear her out at least? Yeah. But see, but I see this is the thing about me, right? Anything when you get the same bullshit, I'm gonna tune out. But what's considered bullshit? Just anything, you don't agree? anything that's not relevant <laughs> to the conversation. That don't bring up. What, what? Don't bring up no old <laughs> shit or some shit that don't got nothing to okay. do with what's going, what's going on, on right or how now. you feel. Like, let's talk about what's at here. Anything else is bullshit. No, I'm, I'm like I'm, that too. I ain't call that. I'm not listening to it. I ain't trying I to hear tune it. out. Oh, you're going to listen. No, I'm tuning out. I'm yes. leaving. You're not leaving until I say what I got to say. I'm going to block the door. See? You toxic. No, I'm not. I think that's <laughs> rude if somebody used to walk it's away and we having a conversation. Listen, I, I got a lot to lose. <laughs> I'm an important person. Me too. So sometimes if it's heated, I'm not trying to... You know what I'm saying? I feel like if you be and like, you look like you might put your hands on somebody. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going that you far. Never put but your hands on nobody. That's my past life, but I'm over now. No, but I feel like you got to tell me like, okay, we not getting no. I feel like in a mature discrepancy, <laughs> um, <laughs> communication talk should be. We not getting nowhere. You yelling at me. I'm yelling at you. Let's revisit this at a you know when we both calm. Yeah, now if I'm we not if we agree on that, then yeah, you can leave. But if you just trying to just blah blah blah, you not talk. If you tell me I'm not talking about nothing and I'm talking about something and I feel like now nah, I'm really mad. I mean that's cool. I'm yeah. out of here. It is what it is. Peace. Bookie. And they gonna get in the car and act like they ain't doing nothing wrong. What? They Never. gonna hit you up a few hours later. Yeah, like we we'll talk doing? later. I'm not about to talk right now though because you not talking about shit. See, and that's wrong. You can't tell me that I'm not talking about nothing. <laughs> but if you ain't talking about shit, you ain't talking about shit. It, listen. <laughs> she getting triggered. You. <laughs> it is what it is. So that's, you, that's the phrase of the rest of this interview. Right, it, is it is what, what it, it is. is. Okay, so that's the title, actually. But um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can't tell somebody their feelings and tell them with that. Because now you wrong. At the, now you even I'm more wrong. wrong. But telling I'm me wrong. that what I'm saying is not relevant. Okay. It might be re- it might not be relevant to you, but don't tell me that what I'm saying is not relevant because right. we got a problem. You're right. And that's how y'all talk. That's why. I'm <laughs> sure you're right. <laughs> you're right. Look, I told you you can't <laughs> respond. You got to say something, but you can't respond. So it's like I don't know what to say to this lady. You're right. Moving forward, if y'all want to talk to a Sagittarius, Damn. I'm warning y'all. Yep. It would be the best decision they ever made in their life. Y'all are, yeah, if y'all just want to talk to him as a friend, that's cool. But don't think y'all about to just be Don't think no. y'all about to settle down. <laughs> okay, until you're five, it is. Man, y'all is crazy. <laughs> you're ten, for real. <laughs> right, because I, I have to use the five to get to know you, and there's going to be another five before I know if I want to marry you. So Y'all are crazy. Man. That's so funny. Do you want to get married? <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> See what I, I'm saying? Actually, no, it ain't. It's not what I'm saying. It's... I actually have been looking into polygamy. Let's talk about it. Um, why? Ha- wait, wait before you get into it, what what made you look that look into that? Just life experience, and then being exposed to people that I know that live polygamous, and like watching how the function of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, for the people who don't know what that is, what is that? Um, having multiple wives. Or, but women can have multiple mm-hmm. husbands too. I was about to say, it could be you know a woman saying? with two husbands. So it's like it's not a it's not a so people look at it like they put it in this light of oh the dude he got a bunch of girls and he fucking with a bunch of girls but it ain't even that's not even what it is right what it is is what it's supposed to be 
it's supposed to be about community and how we all benefit each other, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm just using y'all as an example, right? If I'm kicking it with her and then I start kicking it with you, it's not about what you could do for me. It's about what you could do for us and what how she can contribute to you and how we can uplift each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really, like, in, in real talk, we, like, practice polygamy anyway. Like, a dude that got multiple baby mamas in the family, like, everybody's functioning and everybody is supposed to be helping each other. Um, like with my youngest son, mom, like she's married, right? But like we cool, like I'm cool with her husband. Like I could literally go spend the night at their house to go kick it with my son, mm -hmm. and it ain't no issue. People be looking like, oh, that's crazy, but mm -hmm. why? You know what I'm saying? Like his kids go to school with my kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I pick his kids up from school. Like, why is that an issue? Like we all functioning and all helping each other Adults. move forward. I can see that being a co-parent thing. I don't find that weird at all. But the, back to the relationship. But, it, but it's still it's still the basis of it, though. It's it's all the basis of it. So it's like it's not about people look at it as like, oh, I just got a bunch of women. It's not about that's not what it's about. Right. I um I seen somebody say because, you know, when rent come around, everybody want to have that 50 50 conversation. With, are you going half with your man, half with your woman type thing? So I seen somebody say, if you have a man, and if a man has two girlfriends, you won't have that 50 50 conversation because we all putting in. I mean, then, yeah, but it's still the man's job. You cheating, it is, you cheating if you interested in it. I'm, I, I would not mind having a man and a girlfriend. I feel like we're all going to be together. And I feel like we all. <laughs> Why you look like that? I feel like we all could benefit <laughs> from each other. Like, I mean, the more the merrier. She's crazy. No, it's not, though, because when you that have... That is true. The thing is... I don't care how you put the, it. It's the, not going to make no, sense to the, me. The thing... <laughs> it, no, but everything's not for every... But it's see, not. This is the thing, right? That's why you have... The, so this is the thing. You got to have a conversation from the door. Like, this is mm -hmm. what it is. That's why I've been, like, looking into it and, like, is this really the route I want to go? You know what I'm saying? Because you got to have that conversation from the door. If you're not with it, the door right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Turn around. No hard feelings. I fuck with you still, like, but you don't even gotta tell me the door right there. The moment I hear that, I'm That's gonna cool. see the door. Not you personally, but I'm just saying somebody come at me with that idea. I'm see, not doing but, it. See, but you, the, you, the, see, but again, that's why you go get the nigga who gonna be with you, but he gonna lie to you and still be fucking with somebody else, and then you gotta deal with that. So it's mm -hmm. like, I don't like. What would you? What would you rather deal with? Would you rather deal and, and live? No. Would you live in the truth? It is what it is, mm -hmm. or live a lie. Because most of the time, Neither. most of the time, niggas is lying. I ain't saying that it ain't no person or no that man 1%. that can be with just one woman, but it's highly unlikely. Right. That highly part, I'm gonna take that percentage and test my look on it. But you so you just want to live in the fog in the. I do believe in, <coughs> I do believe in like real love, and I do believe that. Why is polygamy not real love? I'm not saying it's not, but I'm just saying like the <laughs> old-fashioned really, way, the old-fashioned way. What old-fashioned way? But no, why, why? How is that old-fashioned? No, if you really go. Like, I was raised around marriage. If, if you really go back and look at history before, when it was, because we got here through slavery, right? When you go back to over in Africa or, you know what I'm saying, Kings kings had multiple right. wives. So you're saying old fashioned, that's what was taught here. Exactly. Well, that was what was put upon us that this is how you're supposed to live life. And I that's just not that's not necessarily one. like the tradition. I never ever ever seen like this until like this generation. I never like my papa got one wife. Like he was married to my grandmother, like my mom's mom. And they got a divorce. It, even look at and even then look, not a, he got married again. Like, but even look at but even look at oh like oh like I say because you a generation under me, so even the generation above me, right? Our our grandparents, a lot of our grandparents had kids and other families. Like they didn't leave our grandma, but they had a whole another life mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. They just didn't leave. Like you know what I'm saying? It Fact. just was taboo to get divorced and all that, and like the whole you know now was. Now it's like the independent woman thing, which is nothing wrong with being an independent woman. But I think that was something that was put in society to yeah. destroy the black family. Like, but that's a whole nother topic. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, so now it's like, oh, I'm going to leave. I'm an independent woman. I don't need no nigga. Da, 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 da. That's bullshit because you do. I'm never going to say I don't need a man because I want one. Like, I, you know, I'm going to always want one. But I feel like I've watched my papa 
love this one woman and he don't have no extra kids. At least not that it. I know about. But me and my papa are locked in. I don't think he would lie to me about that. I could call him right now and ask him about this. Oh. I, I'm having mm-hmm. to make sure his wife not around because I don't want her to feel no type of way. And he be listening to my podcast. So really, he going to hear it on his own. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm still that 1% that want what I want. Not feel, no, I'm saying I might. That's might what I really want. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm just telling you what I've been looking into. <laughs> And what I, been, <laughs> what, I what I what I've been because if I do something, I want to know, like this is what I'm doing, like and I want to know about it. So yeah, I've been looking into it and like that's something that's like of interest to, to me. Yeah, hello. So can we ask you about this in the near future, even if it's off camera? Because now I'm curious to know. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You gotta be up close to person. I'm about to get one. Girl, bye. All right. She's the joke. Y'all heard it here first. She's serious as fuck right now. Y'all heard it here first. Why you getting one? Uh, the more the merrier. The fuck? <laughs> Financially or the other stuff? Or that. Or that. Financially. <laughs> it's a village. It takes a that's village. My, it really does. That's like, my listen. friend. I'm not going to judge her. I feel love for her. You but she crazy. Judge, you should. Why is she crazy? I just feel like, she's boom. Crazy. So She's going to get in it and it's going to get on her nerves. And she's going to call me about it and go be like, oh, I'm done with that. What if I told you I've been in it for the last three months? Oh shit! <laughs> shit coming, shit coming up today. Have <laughs> shit, you? Shit coming up today. I have. Breaking something's not breaking news. Hmm. Oh, last two months. Sorry. Breaking news. I'm talking about the last time we saw each other when we recorded. Where you was coming from? Good. Who said out? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Where was I coming? Not that polygamy or whatever it's oh. called. Polygamy. <laughs> polygamy. <laughs> Not that polygamy. You don't know. What's going on at my house? You're right. Maybe I should stop by. Maybe you should. <laughs> Anywho, next. <laughs> well, good luck to the both of you. <laughs> we still, you know, locked in. Locked in. That really don't got nothing to do with you. I'm talking about her. <laughs> She's crazy. I am, I am a real. Mary over there like. I am a realist. <laughs> I am a realist. And I just really feel like. What's your sir? I'm a Pisces. She's a Pisces too, but she's Don't a February Pisces. <laughs> she's a February Pisces and I'm a March Pisces. And I feel like when it comes to polygamy that I feel like 99% of men cheat. If they are willing and open to be honest about it and, you know, saying I'm messing with you, but I'm, I also want to mess with her too. Let's see if, you know, because I like girls. She don't. So. Oh, that's your problem. That's the, that's the, that's the, pro- she ain't, but see, then again, I always feel like it's a, it's a, it might be a guy that, could, I, first of all, I always but you don't feel have like. To, but okay. So then you got it in your mind. You, so I she got it did. in her mind. You already. got it in your mind that you got to have people, threesomes people and all this. People ask you, me that. You don't have before. to, that's not, again, that's not. But I'm still not going to be comfortable when I'm not doing you, somebody else doing you. And I'm supposed to know about but it. But you're going to be working. You're going to be building an empire. Sometime. I ain't going to be able to think straight knowing Sometime. my man doing something behind my back. Why, though? If you sit well, there, in front of sit my there and watch if, him. If you sit Shit. there. So this is the thing. This is no bullshit. They trying to talk me into it. I'm not talking you with anything. I'm just saying. I'm just Thumbs saying. Thumbs down in the comments. You busy running around trying to build an empire, build your show, whatever other ventures y'all get into in the media field, or you know, or whatever other field y'all get into, you are a very focused person. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna be running around. You're not gonna be able to satisfy your nigga all the time. Yes, I can. Okay. She's superwoman. She's I'm superwoman. Before okay. I leave. Okay. And when I get back. Tell me how that work out for you. <laughs> Give me about two, three years. I'll let you know. Oh, damn. That's the turnaround on that? Okay. We'll be waiting to see. Yeah, so let, we want to know what y'all think. Make sure y'all let us know. In the comments. Tap in if y'all um, team polygamy. And if y'all not. If y'all team old-fashioned, <laughs> old boring, old adorable. That's not boring. It, I it, can it, be spontaneous. I can be whoever you want me to be. Wanda, Holiday Heart. You can't adore, be. Adore, whoever. <laughs> Just, let me change my outfit. Right? It's like, damn, you ain't got to go get a whole wig. other person. Damn. Yeah, I can be whoever you want me to be. I'm everything. That's what you got two hands for. I'm very, I'm very much a handful. I hear you. 
I hear you. I man. would make a nigga life hell if I had to deal with it. Why? Because what, you, what you say about don't knock it till you try. Don't knock it till you try. And I'm not trying it. You know what I'm saying? I'm you gonna... don't. You, I'm saying that's cool. I, I'm nowhere. I'm not forcing any ideas. We just wasting on opinions. That's all. I don't like I said. I don't even know if that's... Just, if you looked into it, you probably gonna try. It. <laughs> Look, you looked into it. You done did enough research. You like, hey, this ain't this don't sound. Or you bad. might have been doing it the whole time for real. And it was like, let me try to put this on the table <laughs> for real, like mm-hmm. so it can, you could probably ease your mind because you know Sagittarius be having a lot going on, a lot. <laughs> this I know a lot. So, <laughs> just saying. Am I lying? Do, don't we they love us some Sagittarius though. We can't stay away from them. I can. Mm. You is so okay. Um anyways. <laughs> <laughs> On the next episode, the next ask episode. me what guy around that Sagittarius. Alright. Let's get back to the music. Let's get back, back to, to the music. Back to, <laughs> we done cause we done talked about polygamy for a little minute. Which I love. It's like she still say. she's still in a you know what? I'm in a daze. Nah, this What's one that? man he was telling me he was like he was she like, was still uh, I'm about sorry, this is the last thing, though. Because he kept talking she about, excited. he kept getting caught up with cheating. So he like, bro, fuck it. We all just about to go together. Like, I cannot keep going back. I can't pick. I can't pick. So I want both of y'all. What? I'm not going to stop fucking with, I'm not going to stop fucking with you. So. And my hand would have been raised. You know what? I'll be the one to walk away. Oh. Okay. And then you miss him. And then now you back. Okay. And now you're a part of it again. You already know how strong, I'm a strong woman. I get stronger. When we get there. Okay. Don't miss out on your blessing being stubborn. Okay. So, uh, we at the end of the year. What are some goals that you want to accomplish before? Before the year over? Yeah, and at the top of the year. Um, well, one goal. My um, Oh, shout out B-Loading. The young producer from New Orleans that I work with. So, um, he just he just signed a deal. I just got in there. He just signed a deal. Like, we signed that two days ago. Congratulations. So, um... That was one goal. I wanted to get that closed and wrapped up before the end of the year. Um, artist, my uh, artist Chuckster from LA. He uh, he putting his EP out. What they probably be out already by the time this come out. Okay. It come out on the ninth. Okay. So um, that's out. Nisha got another record coming out. Um, All your goals are business related. <laughs> yeah, it's like. That's what I'm on right now. Mm-hmm. I, ain't I on, understand. I ain't on shit else right now. Like I get it. All that other shit. Like I'm on. I'm trying to build something. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to build some shit, leave some shit for my kids. So you know that's what I'm on. Yeah, I ain't on uh, the other punk ass shit. Like, everybody <laughs> else, I ain't on none of that shit. Like so, if you ain't on what I'm on, like it is what it is. It is. Hello. I know that's right. <laughs> well, I did want to say this um, on camera. Uh huh. You know me. <laughs> We hope to see you in the studio soon. What, for the beat hell of a need to make for you? Yes, yep. yes, sir. Yeah, we're going to get that done. You know, I just got to put stuff on camera, so when... <laughs> you know how y'all said, the Terry is me. <laughs> it's like, no, you've always held your word, so... I know. Yeah, always. Man of my word. Yep. And we we really appreciate that. Yeah. On time, you know, good communication. Now, I will say, that's <laughs> probably my biggest flaw. I'm not always on time. You, was you have never you showed was in a grace period. You but you communicated to, that. Yeah. You didn't have us looking for I, I, you. I have learned that, right? Shout out shout out to my partner, Courtney, from For the Love of Cheesecake, because I'm a partner of Cheesecake Company. So she be on my head about being on time for shit. And if I'm not on time, communicate about not being on time. Because sometimes it. I'll get in my own world and be doing 100 things, and I might not. So in my mind, I know, like, all right, I'm going to be 15, 20 minutes late because I'm doing X, Y, and Z. But I won't say that to you. So then we end up, you know what I'm saying, it end up being like an issue because I ain't say that's what she Girl, do. Girl. No, she think do. that people don't. She's gotten better. I'm not going to take that away from her. But her, she would be like, well, they ain't going to be on time anyway. That would give her 10 minutes. When you tell somebody 6, tell them be there at uh, 530. Like, <laughs> like, that's how she operate. But she's gotten way better. She's come a long way. I'm very proud of her. Thank yeah, you. but Thank so you. I try to. So that's probably been like my biggest thing that I've worked on is just trying trying to communicate better um so everything functions more smoothly um because communication is key and I and another thing is 
when I think about something, just doing it right then. Right then. Like, I got to do it right then so um, I won't forget. Like, my homeboy, shout out to my homeboy Zini from uh, Apple Music. I, t- I had a thought and I texted him, but I forgot his LA. He's like, bro, it's 6.30 in the morning, bro. <laughs> I'm like, damn, my bad, dog. I'm like, I just had to get that thought out before I forgot. You know what I'm saying? So, that's us all the time. So, you know, so that's why. Oh, I come through it no matter what. If I'm thinking, I'm yeah. texting. Better put your phone on silent or the text messages on silent. Do not disturb something. She is. Mary, you don't be texting us back um, late. Like, if it's, you'll wait till the next day. Oh, okay. <laughs> I couldn't have my phone on D and D all day. Yeah, you a business. My phone well, you a home manager. Like, you are a business I... woman. Yes, I am. My business phone is on. It's not on. Do not disturb during business hours. Oh, okay, okay. I give you that. Now, after oh, that, I'm texting it's the on person D&D. on my bed. See, but, I I can't, see but that's the thing. I can't have my phone on. Do not. It be. It be real shit going on. I understand that. Call so, 911. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> <You know, laughs> it's gonna still be going on when I wake up or when you know I feel like people, talking. You know, like literally one day, like two days back to back. Motherfuckers got arrested. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, so you back, you back got you in charge of other people's days, life. You know I'm only in charge of my life and or, my kids. Or it's a, it's an accident, or you know, even my kids. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, if it's True. shit going on with my kids, like, so I can't put. If only time I'm putting my phone on do not disturb is if it's some bullshit going on. The motherfucker keep calling my phone. I'm gonna put my phone on do not disturb because it's like, all right, enough is enough. But I try not to put my phone on do put not disturb. Put your foot down. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. You got to have that. I'm a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a businessman, Barry, you do not keep your phone on. Do not Hello. disturb because there's real stuff going on. We trying <laughs> to get in contact yeah, with you. People talk to me at once. I can't take it. I can't take it. <laughs> when everybody on the network want to hit me at the same time, it's like, I, I can't. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Yeah. It's very overwhelming. One you thing need that, an assistant. He do. I do, but I tried that too many times, and now I got burned from it too many times. Fuck mm. it. I myself. I feel you. I, you gonna find that right. I'm working as an assistant right now. I ain't been to work in a month and a half. Don't hire a person. Like <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Bro, it's hard. I'm trying to assist my own damn life right now. Not for you. <laughs> I, I think that was a that was another issue I had. Like I couldn't find someone to do it the way I do it. Mm-hmm. And that's like, ah, oh, it hurt my nerves. Like, no, I would have did it like that. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So, but I've been trying to get yeah, out of Yeah, once that. you teach somebody how you want it to done, let, you know, let somebody shadow you and see how you work, you know, and then. But you got to still let them do it their way. True. You can't, True. You can't force them But you them can to, show them your way. Yeah, but you can't force They still going to have their own, own style, style for sure. and all that. I don't care which way you do it, but this is what need to get done. Yeah. It's how I look at yeah. it. Yeah, I'm just a results person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as the result is the result. I don't care how we got to the result. Like, mm-hmm. let's just get to the result. Get there. Well, well, that wraps it up today. Yeah. We appreciate you for coming out. It's like, no, you got anything else you want to say? Um, Any anywhere, advice? Any more po- po- polygamy oh. advice? No, I'll talk <laughs> She's going to call yeah. you about that because she needs to know. Um, Advice. Um, Just keep it real, man. Like, just keep it real with everybody. Like, don't do no hoe shit. Cause as long as you keep it real, it's always gonna come back to you. People, mm-hmm. people look at it like you know when you ex- extend and do something good for a person, they oh that person would do it for me, but it maybe ain't meant for what whatever energy you put out ain't maybe meant to come back from that place. It's gonna come back from another place. Mm-hmm. So just just keep it real with people, man. You know what I'm saying? And just do good by people. That's it, man. And like, like I said, that. as an artist, just work hard. Just like you, you are the, the engine to everything. You not moving, no team can't move, nobody can't do nothing for you. So you know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. be that, be who you supposed to be. Be that, be real. Yeah, where can the people find you at? Uh, hands up management, H A N D Z U P M G M T. I'm pretty sure y'all have like a graphic or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we somewhere. go. Yeah. Yep. And <laughs> we go to uh, yo yo page gotta be in our description on YouTube. So. Man. I hope I don't get I hope I don't get harassed after this interview. Harass him, y'all. It's like, no, I don't harass him. This was just business. He was just giving the people some advice. <laughs> <laughs> and you know where to find us on all platforms. RT Adore the Letter N Daisy, as well as on the Uprising Network. Yes. On TikTok too. TikTok. Follow us on TikTok. On TikTok. <laughs> Well, that's it. All right. Till next time.